is. It is very good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. I appreciate you being here. Um, it has been, you know, you know, as, as we talked about the, the magnets, uh, just just let it go. Just serve God. If you want to shout, shout. If you want to wave your hands, wave your hands. If you want to praise God, praise God. If you want to cry, cry. If you want to come to the altar, we'll make an altar. We'll move you a lot of the way and you use the front pew and kneel over there. You know. Just just follow God this morning. Just lay aside every single thing that's bombarding us this morning. Everything that's hindering us this morning. And I want to talk to us this morning as best I can that our joy may be full. Yeah. Our, uh, our, our circumstances and situations in our country today are probably as bad as they've ever been. I don't know a thing about World War II and World War I and Civil War and American Revolution and, and all that kind of stuff. I know from my study of history, and I did study history, uh, that in the Civil War, there were family members fighting against family members. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it is now. Mm -hmm. There's family members fighting against family members. And brethren, these things ought not to be. Yeah. And, I, and I look at my life, and I wonder why I'm so... And if I wasn't on the internet, I'd have some adjectives that could describe how I am. But since I'm on the internet this morning, I won't use those because I'll get a bunch of letters. You ought not to use that kind of language. Well, maybe I ought not to. Maybe that's one of my problems. But I don't see my life as a joyous life sometimes. I come in here and I feel the presence of God. And I sense camaraderie among God's people. And, it, and you, can, you can walk, you can just walk through the doors and you feel like God is here saying, well, mm -hmm. appreciate you being here. Yeah. I got something I want to say to you. Are you ready to listen? Mm -hmm. And that's what he says to me when I'm walking in the door. Whether anybody else is here or not. And it's like I told some this morning when I got here. This, the message this morning is for me. So visitors, if you need to leave, you, you can leave. Members, if you, if you need to leave, because this is for me. That my joy might be full. I'm a selfish person. I want to be joyous. I don't care whether I'm happy or not. Right. But I want that joy that bubbles from me within. Yeah. I want that joy that takes me from day to day. I want that joy that no matter what storm I'm in, I can still be joyful. I want that. I'll be honest with you, I don't always have that. I was in the middle of a situation this past week, and it was <clears throat> something that just bombarded me first thing in the morning. I didn't have my eyes open good yet. And I was hit with that situation. And then Rose comes down the stairs and she hits me with another situation and I popped off at her. And granted, she was in the wrong and all that other kind of stuff, but I shouldn't have popped off at her. That was because there was no joy within. Mm -hmm. Because she's been my wife for 42 years. She's been through hell and back again with me. And there is absolutely no reason in the world for me to say things to her in the manner that I, I told the truth. It was just the way I told the truth. Mm -hmm. And I apologized to her later on for the way that I said what I said. What I said was factual. But there's ways of saying, there's, what I, what, what, there's, there's ways of stating facts without being a, <clears throat> here we go with that internet thing again. <laughs> but I look at my life and the joy is diminishing. And it's because I'm letting stuff rob me of my joy. Politicians are idiots. Not going to change. I've always been idiots. 
sinners are going to be sinners. Anti-God people are going to be anti-God. That shouldn't rob me of my joy. Drunks are going to be drunks. Drug addicts are going to be drug addicts. Idiots are going to be idiots. We're not going to change outside the grace of God. One, two, three, four, five. Five, five verses I want to read to you this morning. And then I want to get into some sort of a message. In John 15, 11, the Bible says, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Jesus is talking to his disciples. It's before the crucifixion. He's telling them he's getting ready to go away. He's going to tell them, you know, and all of these things are leading up to it. But he says, These things have I written unto you, that my joy, he, he promises us his peace. He says, my peace I leave with you. Not like the world gives, but my peace. And he says that my joy, the joy that can say, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. I cannot, I cannot physically conceive how the cross could be a joyous occasion. But him looking down the road and seeing Randy Barnes hanging out on the bank of the Tar River in need of a Savior, he could seal the joy of bringing another child home to him. Even though he had to go through stuff to get there. Even though he had to go through immense pain and suffering and torture. These things have I written unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Not because of circumstances and situations. Not because of the things going around you that your joy might be full, but because he's left us with his joy. John 16, 24 says, Hitherto you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you shall receive, that your joy might be full. At that particular occasion in Scripture, he was so caught up in the resurrection, they were so caught up in the resurrection of him being raised, that they, they weren't asking God for anything. Things were going so smoothly that they weren't praying and asking for anything. But he said, you're going to come to a place in your life where you're going to ask for stuff. Many of you this past week have asked for stuff from God. Many of you have had your prayers answered this week. Many of you are still waiting on your prayer to be answered. Don't give up on God. God's not in a hurry. I've preached that series three times since I've been to church here. God's not in a hurry. A little paperback book I found when I was in college. God's not in a hurry. God's got a reason for being as slow as he is sometimes. <laughs> First Peter 1 Peter 1.8 says, Whom having not seen ye love, <coughs> in whom though now ye see him not, yet believe, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Any of you ever been so happy you couldn't even talk about it? I know there ain't a woman in the house that's ever been that happy. <laughs> But you see me in that way sometimes. Mm, yeah! Mm. You know, joy unspeakable. Women, no. Y'all don't even know what it means. Y'all don't even know what it feels like to be unspeakable. <laughs> First John 1 4. I'll say that. Second John 1 12. Having many things to write unto you, I would not write with paper and ink, but I trust to come unto you and speak face to face that our joy might be full. Now, my text is going to come from 1 John this morning. 1 John chapter 1. In Genesis, the very first verse of the Bible, the first record that God decided to write down that he thought was important enough for us to know. Because see, there's a lot of stuff that happened that God didn't write down. There's a lot of stuff that God didn't feel the need to tell us. Mm -hmm. But he said in the beginning was God. Yeah. In John, Gospel of John chapter 1, it says in the beginning was God. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. In 1 John... The Apostle John was somewhere 90 plus years old. He was the only remaining disciple 
of Jesus. He was the one where, where it all started. And the next day, John sees Jesus coming down the riverbank, and he says, Behold, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. I don't think that was the right John, though. That's John, that's John the Baptist, not John the Apostle. John the Apostle was the one that Peter made a note of outrunning him to the grave, and it was John who always wrote. He was the one who Jesus loved. <laughs> When you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> when you know, you know, I guess so. Just like some of you kids, you think you're your parents' favorite child, you know. <laughs> when you know, you know, I guess. But in 1 John chapter 1, John was only the, the only one of the disciples that died a natural death. The rest of them were martyred or killed or whatever, had their heads cut off or boiled or, or uh, crucified or, or whatever. John was the only one that died of old age. Now, he went through hell to get there, but, you know, it's kind of like our COVID thing. You have a heart attack, diabetes, be 400 pounds overweight and everything else, but you're going to get sick, you're going to die of COVID. You know, and, and John had been boiled in oil, John had been exiled, John had been, you know, chafed, but, but he died of old age. Um, but John, in, in John, in, 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 in 1 John chapter 1, it says, that which was from the beginning, which we've heard. We've seen him with our eyes. We've looked upon him. And our hands have handled the word of life. John said, I'm not telling you something I haven't experienced myself. I'm not just giving you secondhand information. This is something that is real to me. I have walked the walk with him. I have talked the talk with him. I have been threatened with him. I have watched him crucify him. I have seen him do miracles. I have, I have looked toward him. I have, I have looked to him for advice, for guidance, for teaching. I, I, I've seen him with my eyes. I, I saw when he was born. I saw the person of Jesus Christ. I saw that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. I saw these. I'm not telling you something. I don't know what I'm talking about. And I'm telling you this morning, I have experienced God in my life. I'm not telling you something that I've just made up or read in a college manual. I'm telling you something that I have experienced. God transforming the raging bull into Pastor Randy. God transforming that butthead of a dad into a father. I'm, I'm telling you what I know personally. The God who took away the demons out of my life. The God who took away the habits out of my life. The God who took away the desire for alcohol and drugs and sex and porn and everything else. The God, and it's God only who can do that because mama tried, daddy tried, the church tried, the youth leaders tried, but nobody could do it. I sat in the church looking at my Playboy magazines. I stood in the back door of the church smoking my reefer. I sat on the back row of the church popping my pills. I know what it's like to be a hypocrite. I know what it's like to sit in a church house and make fun of God. So I'm telling you something that I know is real. I'm not telling you something that I'm just making up. But that I've read somewhere. God bless people that don't have a testimony of sin and debauchery and all of that. I praise God for you. God saved you from a life of sin instead of out of one. But God saved me out of one. And John is telling them here, he says, I'm telling you what I know. This is not hearsay. The second verse is, for the life was manifested. We've seen it. And we bear witness and show it unto you that the eternal life, which was with the Father, was manifested unto us. And we've seen and heard, declare we unto you, that you may also have fellowship with us. Birds of a feather flock together. Yeah. Who are you hanging with? Who are you agreeing with? Where's most of your time spent? John's given us a, 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 an invitation to relationship. It's like I said before the tape. Before the tape, I'm going to use Kathy's words. Before the <laughs> the internet. Yeah, you know, we got all people old enough to go back to tapes in here. We got one that's old enough to go back to floppy disk in here. <coughs> We got another one who went back to the real, the real. I remember him twirling it on a pencil when he was young. <laughs> you want to erase a spot, you roll it back a little bit and tape over it. 
Anybody else in here besides one had a real, real tape recorder? <laughs> Kathy did it, Ray did it, Sean did it. Oh, yeah. Lots of you old folks this morning, huh? Yeah. Oh, even Jenny's back here shaking her head. She wouldn't raise her hand. She thinks she's going to label a Pentecostal. She shook her head. <laughs> but anyway, he is, he's inviting us to a relationship. It's like I said this morning. The key to my joy is my relationship with Jesus. So the reason I ain't joyful is whose fault? Who's? Yours. <laughs> yours. Yeah, yours. Yours. Yeah, you, yours. You got the right answer. Exactly. Yours. Y'all are the reason I'm not joyful. It's your fault. But it's nobody's fault but mine. If I don't have joy because God gave it to me, remember the verse we read a while ago? I give unto you my joy so that your joy can be full. Remember? He said, I'm going to leave with you my peace so that you can have peace. So if you ain't happy, that's circumstances. But if you ain't joyful, that's on you. Yeah. And I know, I know, that the reason my joy suffers is because my relationship suffers. Because I let all this other stuff bombard me. I let all of this politics bombard me. I let all of this unfairness bombard me. I let all of the circumstances and situations get to me. And then I turn to other things for answers. And I got news for you. I've tried it all. I've tried the alcohol. I've tried the drugs. I've tried the sex. I've, I've tried it all. I've tried the workaholic. I've, I've tried it all. And nothing satisfies outside of my Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Invitation to relation. Koinonia. Mm -hmm. Koinonia. It's the Greek word. I, yeah, I, I have to do that once in a while. To keep my pastor license. <laughs> right. It's kind of like you school teachers. You know, you have to go every once in a while to get a couple of credits. I have to look up a Greek word every once in a while to keep my pastor license. But it means fellowship. It means sharing. It means communion. God says, that's what he wants for us. God wants a communication with you. Not just a one-way street. We're good at communicating. One way. But how good are we at listening? When God says, I got it. My, my, my own version of the sermon, and there may not be another preacher in the world who agrees with it, and that's okay. Because the Bible says, you know, beware when all men agree with you. <laughs> I just don't have anybody agree with me, and I'm pretty safe. But when the lady was caught in adultery and thrown there at Jesus' feet, and Jesus began to write in the dirt, and I know there's all kinds of smart folks who say he was labeling the sins of those people, and he was writing down names and all this other kind of and, and that's okay. You think what you want to think. But for my life, he stooped down and started writing in the dirt. That's okay, baby. I got this. Yeah. Watch and learn. Yeah. And God tells me, he says, I got this. Yeah. I got Trump. I got Biden. I got Pelosi. I got uh, whoever else you want. I try not to keep up with any of them. Because they're all a bunch of politicians. <laughs> See, y'all thought I was going to say something mean to you. <laughs> but my joy does not depend on whether Donald Trump or whatever his name Biden is. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden. That, my joy don't depend on which one's president. Mm -hmm. My happiness might, but not my joy. Yeah. My joy doesn't depend on whether Pelosi is Speaker of the House or Schumer or what's that other guy who's from South Carolina or Georgia or somewhere else. Whoever they are. My joy shouldn't depend on them. My happiness? Yeah, maybe. Because I'm going to get real ticked off if somebody says, I'm coming to get your gun. I'm going to get real ticked off if somebody says, I'm coming to say it's okay if you kill a baby. It's, it's okay if you, if you want to do this or that or the, whatever. You know, things that go directly against God and the Bible and the Constitution, I'm against. Period. That's not a political statement. That's a fact of life. If it goes against God, I'm against it. Going old southern, I'm, I'm preaching so Sean can understand. <laughs> that Louisiana blue. 
Now we go we go you Yankees too. I'm against it. <laughs> but if it goes against God, I'm against it. And God says, Suffer the little children to come unto me. For such is made up in the kingdom of heaven. And it ain't okay to kill babies. Period. It ain't okay to kill old folks. Yeah. Rose scares the crap out of me. I've just turned 60 years old this past, is it, no, it's still this month. And everything around our house, honey, why are you throwing stuff away? Because he's old. <laughs> <laughs> it's dirty. <laughs> I'm on my way out. Because <laughs> by half my life, I'm dirty and I'm getting old. So, so, so y'all, 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 y'all look out for me, will you? Protect me from her. She's scary at night. She's scary a lot of times. <laughs> Those of you who know her, she ain't that little woman that sits in church. Yeah, you better get free to us. Well, y'all think I'm on a run up here. There you go. <laughs> but 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 God God is wanting a relationship with us. John is inviting us to have a relationship, not a religion. A lot of folks got a religion. I hear people talking about it all the time. I had a religious experience. Okay? But do you have a relationship with God? I had one of our young people in Sunday school this morning. He said, how do you know if you're a Christian? I thought it was the best question I've ever heard him ask. And one of these days, he's going to know. That which we have seen and heard, declare me unto you. You ever, you ever talk to somebody you really didn't want to say what you had to say to them? Yes. Not Courtney. Nope. Not Never Courtney. Had nope. that problem. Courtney is speaking. <laughs> Didn't do right. But you know, I've, I've had to talk to some people I really didn't want to talk to. But he says here, I'm going to declare unto you. I was there when it happened. I know. I know that God is the only thing that could ever change my life. And I declare it unto you this morning. And I know that God is the only one that can give me joy. I love my wife dearly. I would do anything in the world for her, but she can't bring me joy. Matter of fact, a lot of times she brings me misery. I still love her. <laughs> but I know that my joy about once or twice a year, Rose makes me happy. But my joy comes from somewhere far away from Rose. Mm -hmm. I love my children. I'd do anything in the world I could for any of them at any time. But they don't bring me joy. Occasionally, they bring me a little bit of happiness. <laughs> my grandkids... Somebody said a while ago, it's because we're not parents, we're parents, not grandparents. You know? I want I want my grand Colson had a prayer request in Sunday school this morning. He was describing in detail what he wanted as a prayer request. And, and I think it was Phoebe. They said, why don't you just tell Papa you want it? He <laughs> was. <laughs> And I pray that I get this toy that goes off and it has this and this. It's okay. And it's, but our joy, and that's what that's what I'm You have not because you ask not. Our joy should not depend on what's going on around us. And I don't want to, and, and, and God knows I'll probably get fired and kicked out of the church. But some of you, like me, have lost your joy. Mm -hmm. And you know who you are. And I'm about that far from calling your name. Mm -hmm. But you done got the big eye on me, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> But I told y'all at the beginning of the service that the sermon was for me. But then I heard some of you talking as we began our service. And I know God's speaking to you. Mm -hmm. And 
maybe somebody out there will turn this on at some point in time. It may not be today. It may be next year if God tarries is coming. But I want you to know here and there that your joy is dependent totally upon your relationship with Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and if your relationship with Jesus Christ is not where it needs to be, you're never going to experience joy. Mm -hmm. no. And you can look for it in all kinds of different places, no. but you're not going to find it outside of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And the reason I know that is because I've tried John says, I've been there, done that. A Christian's joy is important and it's assaulted on many fronts. External mm -hmm. circumstances, moods, emotions, sin can take away all of our joy. Yet the Christian's joy is not found in the things of this world as good as they might be. When John wrote about these things, he wrote about his relationship of fellowship and love we can share in and with God the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. Too many Christians <clears throat> are passive in our loss of joy. Mm -hmm. We think it's just the way it's got to be. Well, I'm here to tell you it's not the way it's got to be. We can be joyous in spite of ourselves. Right. Some of you have some health issues and you've lost your joy. Some of you have some financial issues and you've lost your joy. Some of you have some dissatisfaction with yourself and you've lost your joy. God knows you better than you know you and He still loves you. Another three hour sermon, but I don't want to preach it. Thank you, bro. Bryson, will you go get my egg sandwich? I heard Harold's going to go ahead and preach, so I'm going to get it right real quick. <laughs> uh, but if, if, if we'll ever get it through our heads, That my joy is totally 100% dependent upon my relationship with Jesus Christ. Not my husband, not my wife, not my employer, not my children, not my grandchildren. The sun rises and sets in my grandchildren as far as I'm concerned. But that's not where my joy can come from. First time Jenny came to church, she brought her granddaughter with And as much as she loves her, she can't bring her joy. Mm -hmm. She can bring her some happiness. Mm -hmm. And she can find some joy in her grandchild, but that's not going to be her joy. Right. As I said earlier, that joy has to come from within. And that's only through the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. See, you can find happiness in a lot of things. I took Bryson hunting on Friday, Friday night. Mm -hmm. And we sat there and we probably watched 50, 60 deer walk by. We were hiding in the sagebrush and we were all camouflaged. They didn't know we were there. And we had a good time. And I took him home and he was happy. And Rose goes to Hobby Lobby and she finds flowers on sale and she buys a truckload of them and she's happy. You get a woman a diamond and she's happy for about 35 minutes. I get I, I got me I, I sold a couple of guns and traded a couple of guns and I got me a new gun. It's, it was used, but it's new to me. And I took it out as soon as I as soon as I drove up in the driveway. I went out to my target range. Bam, 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 And then I put it in the safe. And I didn't touch it. For a few more weeks. And I ordered new handles for it. I ain't like the other handles. I put new handles on it yesterday. And I'm wearing it today. Because I like new handles on my new gun. <laughs> and 
it brought me happiness for a few minutes. I got a picture on my phone of Phoebe when she shot her first deer. And her grin is bigger than the deer's horns. It brought her happiness for a few minutes. But I have seen her over the last year some kind of grouchy and mean. So it didn't bring her joy. It brought her a little bit of happiness. And I can fake happy. Can y'all fake happy? Have you ever, you ever come into somebody and, and they were they were acting so happy around and you knew they were lying? Gabby, last year she was battling with her brain. <clears throat> and she faked happy. She sent me a text the other day. She said, I miss our rides back and forth to Laurel. Because I used to counsel with her about two hours a day. And I said, I miss those times too. Because I think some of those times we got through to God. Mm -hmm. Must have, because it transformed your brain. Yeah. Some of y'all in here like me. Y'all need your joy. I don't think it's something we ever completely lose. I think it's something we just get enough wet blankets on that we don't feel it no more. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes it's there. We don't lose our salvation. You know, once you got it, you got it. But we can lose the effects of it. Yeah. We get so much stuff Piled on top of it. We bought a camper a few years ago, one of the little pop up campers. And in the camper were these big, huge, thick, down comforters. Is that what they're called? And them, I never thought I'd find a quilt that weighed more than I did. <laughs> but we put that thing on us. And we were laying there trying to sleep. And it felt like that somebody had parked the camper on top of us. <laughs> And I couldn't, I couldn't move. I told him, I said, I don't think they'd rather freeze to death. And so I threw it across the camper, got me a sleeping bag, and pulled over the sleeping bag off because it was smothering me. It was, it was some of y'all buy them stupid weighted blankets. I'm fat enough, I don't need no more weight on me. And you, and you get them weighted blankets, and you lay there. I mean, we used to, back when I was in the school, we'd get them big old fat turtles, you know, and stuff them full of rocks or something, and put them on the kids' lap. The way them now. It's going to be making them secure. Drive me up a wall. I was sleeping one night and I got the sheets wrapped around me. And I, and I mean, the last time I got in a straight jacket, I broke out of the hospital. But, but it, got, it got wrapped all around me. And I was sitting there in the night and I felt like I was just dying. And I just and ripped a brand new set of sheets all to pieces. Because I can't stand to be I can't stand to be closed in. That's the way my joy feels sometimes. And it's angry. As I get about not having the joy, mm -hmm. I just can't seem to break the threads. It's like Samson when they tied him up, and he just snapped him, mm -hmm. he snapped him, he snapped him, and then they cut his hair. And he said he arose and he thought he would break him just like he had so many times before, and he couldn't. And how many of you, like me, you want to be joyful? the experience the joy of the Lord you want to feel the presence of God in your day to day life but you just don't feel like you can break free mm -hmm. I preached a sermon a few years ago about holding the ropes, you know, about letting Paul down in the basket. So I've got to hold the ropes down. This morning, I think I want to cut the ropes. I don't want Paul to drop to the ground, but I want us to cut the ropes of bondage this morning. How many of you be honest enough to say in front of God and everybody this morning, I don't have the joy that I used to have?
How many of you didn't raise your hand for lying? <laughs> How many of you would be honest enough to say this morning, I want the joy that John's talking about? Looking down, but I hear a whole lot of whispering going on out there. <laughs> you know who it's dependent upon? Yeah, me. I know. It's my fault, I know. Everything always is. My relationship, my joy, is dependent upon my relationship with Jesus Christ. <clears throat> my those are personal pronouns. My joy is dependent upon my relationship. He's already done his part. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the joy that you have given. Help us, God, to use what you've given us. Help us to break the chains. 